All right. Matt Walsh rips into human deepfake TikToker Dylan Mulvaney. Just so you know, Dylan has been doing a Days of Girlhood thing where he's a guy dressing up as a girl, trying to pretend like he's a girl, and taking it very seriously, even talking to the president about transgender issues. Um, but yeah, Matt Walsh apparently saw right through it, as this article says. You have successfully shed whatever parts of you were masculine, perhaps at least on the surface. Nobody would ever describe you as masculine or manly. But your femininity quotient has not increased at a rate commensurate with the loss of your masculin masculinity. You may not be masculine, but you also aren't feminine. Instead, you are weird and artificial. You are manufactured and lifeless. You are unearthly and eerie. You are some kind of human deepfake. Wow. There's a lot of conservatives out there. Well, conservatives aside, there's a lot of liberals out there, of course, that were incensed at this. But there's a lot of conservatives that were saying, essentially, you know, he's right about this, but the way he goes about it isn't right. That's not how we gain friends and convince minds and blah, 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 whatever. I think someone said, since he's a Catholic, he's talking about um, Christians winning the hearts and minds of people. He said, this isn't how you win the hearts and minds of people. But Matt made the really good point that Dylan isn't that kind of person he's trying to win the heart and mind of. Dylan isn't someone who's maybe ignorant of the facts and is just trying to figure out what's true or not. Dylan has aligned himself against people like Matt Walsh and aligned himself with people who Matt Walsh is vehemently opposed to. So it makes sense that he would attack Dylan for doing something like this, right? Matt is right that conservatives and really the church included have been too soft in the past few decades, maybe even the past century. And people on the left and right are coming after him, but, you know, in our very litigious society, we kind of bring everything back to law, right? Well, Matt has a very authoritative precedent set before him that he can fall back on when people attack him like this. It's not who you think it is, but it's very interesting. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You shut the door of the kingdom of heaven in people's faces. You yourselves do not enter, nor will you let those enter who are trying to. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You travel over land and sea to win a single convert, and when you have succeeded, you make them twice as much a child of hell as you are. Woe to you, blind guides. You say, if anyone swears by the temple, it means nothing. But anyone who swears by the gold of the temple is bound by that oath. Oh, you blind fools. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites. You give a tenth of your spices, mint, dill, and cumin. But you have neglected the more important matters of the law, justice mercy and faithfulness you should have practiced the latter without neglecting the former you blind guides you strain out a gnat but swallow a camel woe to you teachers of the law and pharisees you hypocrites you clean the outside of the cup and dish but inside they are full of greed and self-indulgence Blind Pharisee. First clean the inside of the cup and dish, and then the outside also will be clean. Woe to you, teachers of the law and Pharisees, you hypocrites! You are like whitewashed tombs, which look beautiful on the outside, but on the inside are full of the bones of the dead and everything unclean. In the same way, on the outside, you appear to people as righteous, but on the inside, you are full of hypocrisy and wickedness. As bad as Matt Walsh's insults might have been, Jesus's are far worse. And if you're someone who is unsure of Christianity, maybe you're some kind of agnostic, maybe you've never heard those before. Maybe as an atheist, you've never heard those before. Maybe as a Christian, you've never heard that before. I hope that it helps paint a picture as to who Jesus really is, because this isn't a 
a speech where he's hateful towards the the Pharisees. The the Pharisees were people who had actually aligned themselves against Jesus, just like Dylan has aligned himself against Matt. And so he wasn't speaking with grace to people who were humble or maybe ignorant of the facts. He was speaking in a way that would most effectively get through to the Pharisees. In the same way, Matt is speaking in the way that gets through to people like Dylan. He gets through to people who are cognizant of all the facts and yet still reject truth and goodness. Dylan is completely in his own world. He's not willing to face the facts and face reality. And so Matt is trying to smack him upside the head with reality, really, because that's all that he can do as it stands right now. When evil shows its head, it's the job of good people to stand up and say something, or even do something like Matt Walsh has done before. As people have said time and time again, evil only wins when good people do nothing. Jesus was a good person who did something. Matt Walsh is being a good person here, doing something, saying something, standing up. When are the rest of us going to follow his example, even if it's offensive? I hope you learned something about Matt Walsh and something about sweet, gentle, harmless Jesus who also, by the way, fashioned his own whip and beat the businessman to run them out of the temple of Jerusalem when they were using it as a marketplace instead of a temple. He was bold, why can't we be? Well, if you want a bit of humor to cleanse your political palate and you're tired of people screeching at each other, maybe take a look at this video. I'll see you next time.